Hello everyone! Today I find myself with nothing to review because my Godzilla movie hasn't gotten here yet. I don't know if the movie's missing and they haven't figured that out yet or what, but I'm hoping that it will get here as soon as possible so that I can review that either Wednesday or next weekend. In the meantime, I need something to talk about, so in light of how well the Vincent Price filmography chat went, I thought I would do another one of those. Um, I was pretty pleased to hear how many of you enjoyed that format and wanted me to do more of those. Um, the thing about it is, when I actually look at different actors and actresses from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and I tally up how many movies I've seen versus how many movies they made, I feel like oh, I can't talk about this person because I haven't seen nearly enough movies, or I can't talk about this person because I haven't seen their most famous movie. It just makes more sense if I focus on someone that I've seen a lot of their early films, their later films, films in the middle, and uh, films that I feel like I can talk with confidence about. With some measure of confidence, I should clarify. Anyway, I thought this would be a good opportunity to shed some light on an actor that I have mentioned a few times, and I'm pretty sure every time I mention him, I say something like, oh, I really need to do a video on him sometime. I've probably been saying that for three years, and it never happens. This isn't quite what I had in mind, but I think it will fit the bill. The actor in question is Edward G. Robinson. Edward G. Robinson is someone who I consider one of my favorite actors. He was very popular popular in the 1930s and 40s as a gangster. So popular that if you watch things that have gangster parodies, like Looney Tunes cartoons and things like that, you will often see an Edward G. Robinson caricature. But he also made a lot of other movies, and I think his filmography reflects that versatility. Um, what I like about him is not so much his gangster portrayals, although some of his gangster movies are incredible, but I prefer his more sensitive roles, where he shows um, a character with a lot of dimension and a lot of vulnerability. It's actually kind of funny to try to reconcile the two personalities he played most often on screen. These warm, kind of vulnerable characters versus these cold-blooded killers. And another thing I like about Edward G. Robinson is that from what I've heard, in real life he was nothing like the gangsters he portrayed on screen. He was a kind, gentle, mild-mannered man. Like Vincent Price, he loved art and had an extensive art collection, and and that was something that was a really big passion of his. He did write an autobiography, I believe, which I still haven't read, but it will happen eventually. <laughs> so, let's get to the filmography. Alright, as I did before with Vincent Price, I'm going to be scrolling through the filmography listed on imdb.com and starting at the bottom. I didn't realize this. He actually started in silent movies. His first acting credit is a movie called Arms and the Woman from 1916. He's credited as a factory worker, so I imagine he was an extra. 1923, The Bright Shawl. 1929, The Hole in the Wall. It says in the little picture here, Hole in the Wall, starring Claudette Colbert and Edward G. Robinson. You know how sometimes they'll repackage a movie and there might be someone listed like sixth or seventh in the credits who later on became much more famous, but they'll repackage it and say starring so-and-so to make it look like they are the number one billed person, but it's really not the case. They have like two scenes and they die in the second one. It does seem like maybe that's not the case here, so he did have a prominent role in a 1929 film. I didn't realize that he was making movies that early. Uh, the Night Ride, 1930, A Lady to Love, 1930, a German film, Die Sehnsucht jeder Frau. My German is terrible, I don't know what that means. Something, 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 woman. Outside the Law, East is West, I have heard of East is West, so I haven't seen any of those movies. Finally, in 1931, we get to his big breakout performance in 1931's Little Caesar. He played Little Caesar, who also was known as Rico. That's the movie that kind of started his whole gangster persona. One of Robinson's most famous lines comes at the end of that movie, Mother of Mercy, is this the end of Rico? I think I remember reading on the DVD case or something that for the scenes when Edward G. Robinson has to shoot a gun, 
Um, he kept flinching every time he pulled the trigger, so they had to tape his eyelids open because it would not look right at all if this big, tough gangster, not really big, Edward G. Robinson was on the shorter side, I don't know, 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, but it would not look right if this tough guy was going in to rob a bank or shoot up a rival gangster or something, and he was firing a machine gun and just like, ooh. So they had to tape his eyelids open, which sounds really uncomfortable, but it worked. It was a very popular movie and the first of many gangster roles he played. According to this, he followed that up by appearing as a gangster in a Laurel and Hardy short, so the typecasting began, although it is possible that that was filmed before Little Caesar. Um, then he was in a movie with James Cagney, another very big gangster actor of the 1930s. There's a whole group of them that just played umpteen gangsters. Robinson, Cagney, Humphrey Bogart, George Raft, Smart Money, Five Star Rival, The Hatchet Man, Two Seconds, Tiger Shark, Silver Dollar, The Little Giant, I Loved a Woman, Dark Hazard, The Mi Okay. All those movies I haven't seen. That takes us up to 1934. By the way, I don't know how many of those were actually gangster movies or crime dramas. Because I haven't seen them. <laughs> but this one I have seen, The Man with Two Faces. I believe this co-stars... <sighs> What's her name? This is the disadvantage to doing an unscripted video, is I try to... Mary Astor. Um, I just double-checked that to make sure I'm not telling you false information. Yes, it co-stars Mary Astor. Um, that was a really good movie, and I think I remember it had pretty good makeup effects. Not that it's a scary movie at all. I know that you might think, The Man with Two Faces, okay? Is he a two-headed monster? It's not that kind of movie. But there's an element there of mystery, and uh, I thought it was pretty good. The next year he was in a movie called The Whole Town's Talking with Gene Arthur, and this was where he started to mix things up. And this is something I really enjoy about Robinson's movies is that he has the gangster movies, but he also has the gangster comedies, where he is kind of parodying his own persona. I've seen some of them, and to be honest, I'm not sure if I've seen The Whole Town's Talking or not. Certainly, the combination of Robinson with Gene Arthur would be really interesting. I can't really picture it, so that makes me think I must not have seen it. The thing about Robinson's gangster comedies or gangster spoofs is that I like them better than his straight gangster movies in most cases, but I have a hard time recommending them to people because I kind of feel like you have to be at least marginally familiar with his straight gangster roles and the straight gangster movies to fully appreciate the hilarity in the comedies and the spoofs. I definitely think the gangster comedies are enjoyable either way, but they might be just a little bit more enjoyable if you know what they're poking fun at. We have a few more that I haven't seen. Barbary Coast, Bullets or Ballots. I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen Bullets or Ballots. That's kind of a famous one. Thunder in the City. Kid Galahad in 1937. I have seen this one. It's a gangster movie. It's a little bit of a boxing movie, but not really. I wanted to see it because it is Edward G. Robinson opposite Betty Davis. When I went into it, I thought it was going to be more of a comedy. It's not really, but um, it was an enjoyable movie. Um, after that, he was in The Last Gangster, which... I... I don't think I've seen this one. And then in 1938, he was in A Slight Case of Murder. It's pretty obvious from the title, A Slight Case of Murder, that this is a comedy. And this is the one, okay, this is the one where Robinson plays a gangster who decides to reform and live a respectable, decent life, and he adopts a kid from an orphanage, this juvenile delinquent, and he and his wife... Uh, take a house, and they end up with all of these dead bodies in the house. And the dead bodies keep moving around. And there are other gangsters, gangsters who are not taking it seriously that Robinson isn't um, going straight anymore. And he's got his old pals who are just kind of like, what are we supposed to do, boss? I think it might have been the funniest of the gangster comedies I saw, although Larceny Inc. is also pretty funny. It is totally ridiculous, but it's a fun movie, so a slight case of murder, you might want to check that one out. 
The next couple I haven't seen. I don't think I've seen The Amazing Dr. Clitterhouse. That's a Humphrey Bogart movie. I Am the Law. I have not seen. 1939, he was in Confessions of a Nazi Spy. Uh, 1939, we weren't in the war yet, but we were thinking about it. I have seen this one. It was a while ago, and I might have fallen asleep on it. <sighs> Terrible person. At the time that I saw it, I think I expected there to be a little bit more action and intrigue than there was. He also did a movie called Blackmail, haven't seen. Dr. Ehrlich's Magic Bullet, haven't seen. Brother Orchid, I have seen. This is another gangster comedy, sort of a comedy. I didn't think it was as funny as some of the other ones. I think it also has Humphrey Bogart. And uh, let's see, Brother Orchid is the one where Robinson is a gangster who hides out from some guys who are trying to kill him in a monastery. Then he was in A Dispatch from Reuters. Reuters? Reuters. Then he was in The Sea Wolf, which is a movie based on a Jack London story, co-stars Ida Lupino and John Garfield. Um, Robinson's character is very mysterious, gruff, uh, kind of paranoid. Um, I don't remember a whole lot about The Sea Wolf, to be honest, and I know that a lot of people are big fans of that movie. So, I'm not going to say any more about it in case I say something wrong. 1941, he was in a movie called Manpower with Marlena Dietrich and George Raft. I don't think I saw it. <laughs> also that year, Unholy Partners. I haven't seen that one. 1942, A Night Before Christmas, and the picture is Larceny, Inc. Is Larceny, Inc. also titled A Night Before Christmas? Was that a Christmas movie? I can't remember. That, yeah. It says three ex-cons buy a luggage shop to tunnel into the bank vault next door. That is the plot of Larceny, Inc. So, alternate title, A Night Before Christmas. I had no idea. Uh, yeah, Larceny, Inc. co-stars, um... I can just scroll down. Jane Wyman. And it's a funny movie. It's kind of quirky. People are constantly coming in and interrupting them and actually wanting to buy luggage when they just have this luggage store as a front. And um, it's a little bit annoying, but it's also funny. And of course, everything that possibly can go wrong does go wrong. Like I said, I enjoyed A Slight Case of Murder more, but this was a fun one too. Then he was in a movie called Tales of Manhattan, which I'm not familiar with, but the picture here makes it sound really interesting because it lists all these names and they're really big names. It's a lot of people. Are they all cameos? During World War II, he made a few World War II movies and one was 1943's Destroyer. This one co-stars Glenn Ford and I think I was going to watch it. I found a copy on YouTube, but then the quality just was not good enough and I decided to skip it rather than suffer through the movie. So that is one that is still on the watch list. The next couple I haven't even heard of, Flesh and Fantasy and Tampico. And then in 1944, he played a supporting role in what is probably one of his most famous movies and most famous performances, that is Barton Keyes in Double Indemnity. I talked about this movie, including Robinson's role in it, in a video I did a while back on my five film noir picks. Um, super famous movie if you haven't seen it and you are a noir fan. What are you doing? <laughs> Robinson is great in that movie. He is shrewd and very quick-witted, but he's also good-natured and sympathetic. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, it was seeing some of that performance, not all of it, but a few of his scenes in that movie that made me take notice of him in the first place. Um, because I just liked the way he played the role. I liked the way he delivered the dialogue, but I don't know, I just liked the expression in his face. I don't remember what the station was, but they played two Edward G. Robinson movies back-to-back, -back, Double Indemnity and The Stranger. I can't remember which one was on first, but I saw some of one and then the other, and I just fell in love with him. After that, he did a movie that must be a comedy. It's called Mr. Winkle Goes to War. He played Wilbert Winkle. It can't possibly be a serious movie with a title and a character like that. Then he was in The Woman in the Window, which is a Fritz Lang film where Robinson stars opposite Joan Bennett, but it's not Scarlet Street. 
I thought that Scarlet Street came out first, but apparently not. Uh, the Woman in the Window has been on my watch list for such a long time, and I think one of the reasons why I've put off doing a Robinson video is because I kept saying to myself, well yeah, but I gotta watch The Woman in the Window first, and here I am making the video and I still haven't seen it. <sighs> oh well. Then in 1945, he was in a movie called Our Vines Have Tender Grapes, which is one of my favorite of his performances. It is so warm and tender and just adorable. He plays a Norwegian farmer in the upper Midwest, and young Margaret O'Brien plays his daughter, and they have such a delightful relationship. It's a good movie about two little kids getting into all kinds of trouble and learning lessons and growing up. But, of course, I was there for Edward G. Robinson, and I just loved him in the movie. That year he also appeared in a war movie, what I think of as more of a British war movie, called Journey Together. I did a mini-review of this one, I don't know, a few months ago? Last year? Could have been two years ago? These British flyers are sent over here for additional training. Um, it wasn't a huge part, but it was sufficient. I was happy with it. And then he was in the aforementioned Scarlet Street, which is a movie that I definitely acknowledge is famous and is an excellent movie, but I do not enjoy watching it. It's just so... ugh. This is the other Fritz Lang directed movie co-starring Joan Bennett, and uh, Robinson plays this good, mild-mannered man who unfortunately crosses paths with a femme fatale. Um, she and her boyfriend, played by Dan Duryea in one of his most despicable roles, cook up this scheme to um, string Robinson along. It's so awful and it makes me so angry. Um, they demean him and they take advantage of him and she has him convinced that she maybe doesn't love him, but at least likes him a lot, and uh, it's, it's, uh, I don't even want to talk about it because it's so depressing to me, and it's probably because I like Robinson so much that I get so upset watching things unfold in the movie. It has this overwhelming feeling of helplessness, and I don't like that, but it's a good movie, then, in 1946, he was in another one of my favorites of his, The Stranger. This is a post-war movie that focuses on Orson Welles playing a German who has some secrets from his past that he's trying to hide. It also stars Loretta Young as his fiance, then wife, and it is a spooky, moody drama, um, and Edward G. Robinson plays the, is he a detective or an agent? I can't exactly remember. He just has this innocuous way of finding out information and tracking down things, and I just really loved the, the laid-back performance and his good humor. I don't know how to describe it, but there's just something about Edward G. Robinson that I find very huggable. The next year, 1947, he was in The Red House, which is a movie that I did a mini-review on sometime in the last year. I'd wanted to see it for a long time, and I finally did. He plays a very mysterious and unpredictable character in this. It's very interesting. Um, I remember I was very impressed with some of the young actors in this movie. Um, they were teens who I was not familiar with, and... Two of them, at least, I thought did a very good job. 1948, he was in a movie called All My Sons with Burt Lancaster, which I don't think I've seen because I can't picture the two of them in a movie together. That year, he was also in Key Largo, which is one of his biggest, best gangster performances ever, and it's another one, like Double Indemnity. If you haven't seen Key Largo, you really should. It is um, top-notch film noir. Is it noir? It's kind of noir. It's noir, it's a crime drama, it's... it's kind of a thriller. It is also one of the best Bogey and Bacall movies, also has a really good performance from Lionel Barrymore, also has a great performance from Claire Trevor. Key Largo is set at a hotel as a hurricane is approaching, and Robinson's character, Johnny Rocco, and his... his 
gang, his coterie, whatever you want to call it, they descend on this hotel to hole up. I think they're on the run from the police or something. It's been a while since I saw it. And the hurricane hits, and they basically terrorize everyone in this hotel. Johnny Rocco is just this despicable person, but really fascinating <laughs> as well. But now we've reached the point in his filmography where there are a lot of gaps because apparently in my life I did a really good job of watching his movies from the 1940s, but I kind of neglected this whole period because I haven't seen any of these movies. Night Has a Thousand Eyes from 1948. Um, I'm really familiar with the song The Night Has a Thousand Eyes by Bobby V, but I haven't seen that movie. House of Strangers, I don't think I've seen. With Susan Hayward and Richard Conte, I don't think so. It's a great feeling. He's listed as playing himself in an uncredited role. That sounds like a cameo. Operation X, I don't think I've seen that. With Peggy Cummins and Richard Green. Actors in Sin, I'm not familiar with that. Vice Squad, Big Leaguer, The Glass Web. He did some TV appearances. For the Defense, Black Tuesday, The Violent Men, Tight Spot, A Bullet for Joey, Illegal, Hell on Frisco Bay, I haven't seen any of these, Nightmare, okay, he was in the Ten Commandments, um, and unlike last time, when I could not remember Vincent Price's performance in the Ten Commandments, I do kind of remember Edward G. Robinson in that movie, I remember not liking his character. He did quite a bit of TV in the 50s and 60s, but he also squeezed in some film roles. He was in A Hole in the Head, that's a Sinatra movie, I haven't seen it. Seven Thieves, Pepe, I'm assuming it's Pepe and not Peep. A movie called My Geisha, Two Weeks in Another Town, A Boy Ten Feet Tall, The Prize, Robin and the Seven Hoods, Good Neighbor Sam, I haven't seen any of those movies. Cheyenne Autumn in 1964 I did see, or I at least saw most of it, so I'll count it. The Outrage, Who Has Seen the Wind. I have only seen a little bit of The Cincinnati Kid in 1965. That's Edward G. Robinson co-starring with Steve McQueen and Anne Margaret. It's a movie about playing cards. It's about more than that, though, of course. It's another one that's been on the to-watch list for a long time. I haven't heard of any of these movies. The Blonde from Peking, Grand Slam, Operazione San Pietro, which I imagine must be an Italian movie. The Biggest Bundle of Them All, Never a Dull Moment, It's Your Move, McKenna's Gold. McKenna's Gold, that sounds familiar. Is that a war movie? No, it's a western. Well, I haven't seen it. The Old Man Who Cried Wolf, Song of Norway. Interesting. He played another Norwegian character. His second to last film was a movie called Neither by Day Nor by Night, which I can't tell if it's an American movie or an Israeli movie. Um, it looks pretty good though. And then in 1973 he made his last film, which I think might have been released after his death, Soylent Green. Ugh, I have such a strong temptation to say the famous line from that movie, which everybody knows, but Maybe there are people watching this video who haven't seen Soylent Green and miraculously do not know the twist, so I'm not going to spoil it, and I hope that nobody else will. Soylent Green is set in a future post-apocalyptic world. I guess it's post-apocalyptic. Certainly everything is as awful as it is in a post-apocalyptic movie. Um, the root cause of the awfulness is overpopulation. The movie stars Charlton Heston as a police detective who's trying to solve a murder, I think. Honestly, that plot always takes a back seat to the bigger issue, um, especially because I have seen the last I don't know, 20, 30 minutes of this movie so many times, far more times than I've seen the rest of it. Edward G. Robinson's character, Saul, is... Uh, my mom would know all these details right off the top of the head. She loves this movie, she's seen it many, many, many times, and she would be able to tell you what his character is. He's like a... Uh, I can't remember what they call him. A librarian? Or a brain or something. His character gives information to Heston's character and kind of helps him out on his cases, and they have a nice bond, some good camaraderie, but uh, at a certain point the movie takes a dark, dark turn. It actually has a very sad, poignant scene. It's hard to talk about because I don't want to give too much away. Um, I'll say this. 
it's a death scene and it's a pivotal death scene. I always think it's, I don't know, is ironic the right term? It's, it's striking, we'll say that, when an actor's last scene in his last movie before he dies is a death scene, and that's the case here. It's especially powerful, I think, because, at least from what I've read, um, Robinson knew that it was going to be his last scene. He knew he was dying in real life, and he didn't tell this information to anyone else making the movie. And during the scene, as Heston is interacting with Robinson, he gets emotional, and I think that that emotion, at least to some degree, is not really acting. It's a moving scene, um, made even more effective, I think, by that, and I think about it every time I see that scene and it makes me emotional, and, um, I don't necessarily love the movie Soylent Green. I think it's a little strange, I think there are some elements to it that are a little, uh, okay, but, um, it is a must-see Edward G. Robinson performance and a powerful note to go out on. All right, so that is Edward G. Robinson's filmography. There are a lot of movies that I still haven't seen that I would like to. I hope that I've provided you with some good movie recommendations, whether you're familiar with Edward G. Robinson or not. If you're not familiar with him, I hope this was a good introduction. I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time, hopefully with a Godzilla Final Wars review. Thanks for watching!